Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about Interrupt Affinity, how to use the Microsoft Interrupt Affinity tool to improve performance and lower latency, use Auto GPU policy to test for the best cores for GPU, and use LatencyMan to check which cores are the best for the lowest latency. Before the video starts, I remind you that when following or applying tweaks, it is recommended to keep a system restore point or a backup and watch the video till the end to understand it fully. The video explanation might be simplified to make it easier for people to understand it. Remember, I am not responsible for any damages or problems that might occur to your computer when doing this. First let us know what Interrupt Affinity is. Interrupt Affinity is the process of assigning a device to a specific core rather than letting Windows handle assigning cores for devices. By setting the cores of your USB controller, any devices like a mouse, keyboard, or any input device plugged to it, you can decrease the latency of that device's incoming input. This also works for your graphics card. By setting the core of it, you can improve the performance and latency of the GPU. So how does it improve performance and reduce latency you may ask? By binding the GPU to a performant core, you can potentially improve its performance and lower its latency. For the USB controller where your mouse and keyboard are connected, if we assign the USB controller to an unutilized core or a core that has less workload, or specifically a CPU core that has the lowest ISR and DPC, we can effectively lower its latency. Next is a tool called the Microsoft Interrupt Affinity Tool. This is the tool that we are going to use for binding or assigning cores for the devices. You can download this by searching for Microsoft Interrupt Affinity Tool from the Tech Power Up website or by just clicking the link in the description. Then we have LatencyMan. This software will help show which core has the lowest ISR and DPC. To download, look for LatencyMan by the Resplendence website or by also checking the description. Lastly, we have AutoGPU Policy. This is a tool created by Valley of Dome to test which is the best performing core for the GPU. You can download this by searching for it or by checking the link in the description. Before we assign the cores for our devices, we first need to know which CPU core is the best performing for the GPU and which is the best core that offers the lowest latency for our latency USB controller. Let's start by testing for the best performing core for our GPU. First, extract the downloaded zip file from the Auto GPU Affinity GitHub page and open the folder. You will see the Auto GPU Affinity executable and the config file. When running the tests, always make sure you have no apps or any processes open, as they can interfere with the result of the benchmarks. This includes Spotify, Vanguard, Chrome, or any software. When any of the tests are running, avoid sending any inputs, such as moving your mouse, typing, plugging stuff in, or doing anything on the computer, as these can sometimes affect the result. To start the benchmark, open the executable, close File Explorer, and press Enter on your keyboard to start the benchmark. If you encounter problems when running it, try to run it as an administrator. Once the benchmark is done, you should see the results and take a picture of it, but use another device, like your phone, when taking a picture of the results. I recommend running the test three or more times to get accurate results. After you are done with the benchmarks, you can start analyzing the results. Do note that the FPS is being measured here, so the higher the FPS, the better. I recommend looking for the overall best performing core that includes max, average, minimum FPS, and other variables. If you are too lazy to analyze numbers or your brain is the size of a pea, then you can try asking AI chatbots to do the work for you, but I would highly recommend just analyzing the data by yourself, as these AI chatbots can sometimes hallucinate and give you incorrect information.
So between the three tests, the best performing core overall for me is core 3. If the best performing core overall for you is core 0, we will avoid using core 0 and instead choose the second best performing core overall. So why is that? It is because core 0 is always used by devices or processes, so we would want to avoid putting devices on there. Now that we know the best performing core for the GPU, we can start assigning cores for our GPU. Extract the downloaded Interrupt Policy Affinity Tool zip file, and inside it, you will see three executables. I recommend using the executable based on the architecture of your computer. But you can just use the x86 architecture and run it as an administrator. Inside the window, you will see all your devices, and you want to look for your GPU. Mine is a GTX 750 Ti, so once you find yours, click on it to highlight it, and then click on the Set Mask button. After you click the Set Mask button, a new window will pop up, and you should see all your CPU cores. In this window, you will want to assign the best performing core from the Auto GPU Affinity test that we did. For me, it is Core 3, so I will choose that. Once you assign the best core for your GPU, make sure only that specific core is ticked on, click on OK and it should ask you to restart. After restarting your PC, you have completed setting the best performing core for your GPU, therefore lowering its latency and improving its performance. Next, we will go on to setting the lowest latency core for our devices, such as the mouse and keyboard, to reduce input delay. First, start by installing LatencyMon and opening it. Inside Latency Mon, hit the green play button, and just like the first test, make sure to close everything before starting the test, and avoid doing anything to your computer while the test is running. I recommend running the test for 20 minutes at a minimum for accurate results, but 30 minutes or longer is best. Make sure you close File Explorer before running the test. After 20 or more minutes, click the red pause button to stop the test. Then, click on Stats, and scroll down until you see PER CPU data. In this area you will see the result for each of the cores with their ISR and DPC results. I am not going to go through and explain what ISR and DPC mean, as this is very hard for me to explain thoroughly, but if you want to know, then I suggest looking it up. In looking for the best core, you want to see which has the overall lowest ISR and DPC, specifically the ones highlighted. Again, you can use AI chatbots to analyze the results for you, but please try analyzing it on your own. If the best core in terms of the lowest ISR and DPC is the same as the core we assigned for the GPU, then choose the second best. Avoid using Core 0. You might be wondering why you shouldn't set multiple devices on one core? This is because if you have two devices on a single core, they can start fighting for resources to send instructions on that core, which will lead to an increase in latency or delay and worse performance. This is why it's best to separate them. In a scenario, if your best performing core for your GPU, based on the Auto GPU Affinity Test, is Core 3, then Core 3 should only be for the GPU. You can't use Core 3 for assigning other devices anymore even if the result from LatencyMon says that the best core with the lowest ISR and DPC is Core 3, then still you can't use that core for your other device, such as your USB controller, since the GPU is assigned to Core 3. Instead, you will need to choose the second best low ISR and DPC core after Core 3 if that happens. So for me, I ran the test for 20 minutes, and the best core with the lowest overall ISR and DPC for me is Core 5, and it is not the same as the core where my GPU is set, which is Core 3, so Core 5 will be my lowest latency core for my USB controller. After you find which CPU core is the best or has the lowest ISR and DPC, then that specific core 
is what you will use for your USB controller. We can proceed now and open the Microsoft Interrupt Policy tool again to start assigning the core for the USB controller. Just like what we did for assigning the core for the GPU, you will want to look for the name of your device instead. To find your USB controller, you will want to go and open Device Manager. Go to View and choose Device by Connection. Here you will see all devices connected. You want to look for your USB controller. For me, my USB controller is named Intel USB 3.0 Extensible Host Controller, since I am using an Intel CPU, and it might show as AMD Host Controller, or something if you have an AMD CPU. To know if you found the correct USB controller, you can show the devices plugged into it by clicking on the arrow on the left of it, and you will see USB Root Hub and Extend that also. You should see USB Composite Device. By extending it, you will see your devices that are plugged in, such as your mouse, webcam, or other input device. After you are sure that it is the right USB controller where your devices are plugged into, you will want to double-click on that specific USB controller. Mine is Intel USB 3.0 Extensible Host Controller, so I will double-click on it. A new window will pop up, and it should show you information about the device. What you want to look for is the location. In Interrupt Affinity, you will want to look for the device that will match the location info. Here you can see that I found my USB controller in Interrupt Affinity, and it matches the location inside of Device Manager. This means that I have found my correct USB controller in Interrupt Affinity. After you find your USB controller, click on it to highlight and click the Set Mask button. Then assign the best core with the lowest latency. So the best lowest core with the lowest ISR and DPC is Core 5 for me, so I will set my USB controller to only that. After clicking the OK button, restart your PC and you are done with setting interrupt affinity for the lowest latency and improving performance. I hope this guide helps you, and I apologize if it's a bit confusing. I wasn't planning on publishing this video as I originally made it as a guide for my Discord server. That's why it's so scuffed and wasn't meant to be uploaded. If you see any mistake in the video then I apologize and please comment it down. I plan on uploading a video about input latency for keyboard and mouse, so if you're into getting the lowest performance for your keyboard and mouse, then you will want to check that video. Thanks for watching.